Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to paint this blank into a natural roach pattern with only some silver, some green, some black and this sponge, uh, we're gonna make a stencil out of it. You can find this in any hardware store, in uh, beauty stores. It's, it's mainly used in the shower, I think. I'll, uh, I'll, send, I'll, I'll put a better picture um, here on the screen. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. Alright guys, let's get to it. I'm using this 10 centimeters slider blank from Lure Blanks. These have an awesome action, a little bit of flanking as well. So when the sun is shining, this kind of pattern really kills it. So we're gonna start off with just opaque black for our base coat and we want to do that because between the scales of a roach you see there's like a darker pattern it's where the, the scale is not totally no, close to the to the skin so you get like a little shadow and that's what the the black is for so that's why we're going to use black first I'm gonna thin it down a little because the opaque is quite thick this is createx opaque black I think it's a little too thick to shoot so I thin it down a little there we go Let's see what kind of air pressure I'm shooting. 20 psi. There we go. Real test shooting. Okay, and we're good to go. I'm going to do four four pieces at once. I have a few orders laying out as well. Now I leave the bottom white, as you can see. That's because we're, we will be not doing any scaling on the belly, um, so we can just leave that white. Because um, it will be white anyway at the end. So there's no need to waste any paint there. Now we're gonna heat set this because we're gonna use our netting already and if we do not have a dry paint then we well it's easier to scratch the paint off so we want to make sure this is all dry let's talk about the netting I'm going to use for this pattern it is actually this one it's very stretchy and it does feels little feels like it's a little greasy or something or oily it's a really special type of netting but um, it's really easy to get by you can buy it in any local store now about the direction of the pattern if you look at the, the example of a, a roach you'll see that the scales are pointing downwards so we want to use this netting this way and not this way because this would give us a rather weird effect something not natural at all so we want to use it this way so take that in account and uh, yeah just put the netting on in the right direction so the trick is to trim them well enough This side is pretty good. This side, a little. We better there, but. I think we can work with it. 
on to the next one. So we got our stencils on after some blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> no. We we got them on eventually. It's a bit of um, finding your technique with these stretchy stencils. I, I don't really like stretchy stencils. I prefer them to be solid. Way easier to tighten them and cut them. But uh, yeah, we got them on. So now we're gonna come back with white. I'm gonna take wicked white. Shake it well. Put a little in there. And I'm gonna thin it down as well because we're going to shoot this as, at a very low air pressure. Because this stencil isn't really stuck to the lure like another stencil would do. So the key is to shoot really low air pressure and uh, at a big distance if possible. You know, I know if you're doing details, it's not always possible. So we're mixing this up. Back flush. Test spray. Shooting nicely clean. There we go. I'm gonna lower lower the air pressure to about ten psi. So that's really low. Okay, ready to shoot. Sometimes these kind of darker spots in the scales and they're more at the beginning of the scales than they are at the end. So that's why I'm going to shoot only the front direction so I keep a little bit more black um, in the beginning of every scale. So I'm gonna fill up everything with white on the back of every scale. There we go. Now we're gonna do the other side. Another good thing is when we shoot only one direction, especially when we shoot from the head to the tail, we're keeping the gill plates black at the at the back, so we're creating a little depth there as well. All of them had white. Now I'm going to clean out the airbrush very thorough because we're going to come back with silver now.
we don't want the opacity of the white to middle or metal metal with the, the silver basically we don't want to have them both blended because that's not a good combination an opaque with a transparent paint you'll just lose your effect we take our silver that's this one I shake it very well. Now this is a quite run runny paint. It's Createx Silver. Let's see, it's a Wicked, yeah, Wicked Silver. Now because it is so thin. Uh, we can shoot at a low air pressure without thinning it, down, thinning, thinning it down But we have to watch out it doesn't run underneath our stencil So we're gonna keep keep same air pressure very low 10 psi and keep uh, big distance keep long distance from your lure when shooting As you can see I'm, I'm keeping it like as far as I can We got this done. I'm gonna heat set it for a moment. We're gonna remove the stencil. get this nice scaled effect nice big scales with nice depth in the side of them kinda looks like a snake as well but we're gonna make a roach out of this one all of them so we look at our roach at its head alone then we can see there's a little bit of silver white and green in there so we're gonna make the head a little lighter just a little bit thin down white it's important we thin it down so it becomes a little bit more transparent because we want to keep the little silvery flash underneath as well we're gonna lower the air, oh, up the air pressure till 15 do a little test frame, there we go
so we got all that done now we're gonna take green if you have moss green even better I have to mix it a little bit so I just mix this is regular regular green from Createx I'm gonna mix it with a little black dark green gonna do the back now we're also gonna go around the eyes Darken that a bit out. And if I look at my reference picture, also in the first guild plate, there's a little bit of so we're gonna just do a little accent there and the mouth as well. Darker green. And just a little bit around the eyes. the fins as a real roach has this kind of transparent orange reddish fins so I'm gonna take wicked red pin it down Just one little drop of reducer. Now we're not gonna only put fins on it, but also when you buy these uh, 10 centimeter sliders from Lure Blanks, you get the eyes included. Now these are silver. In my opinion, silver eyes are the best ones you can get because you can give them basically any color you want. So we're also gonna paint the eyes red. Just like a real roach has red eyes, red orange, but I'm, I'm gonna take red. 
So we're gonna try to make them a little bit more realistic as well. So now we're gonna put on a fin. I'm gonna see which stencil I'm gonna use. This is a fin stencil to another lure. It's a really huge fin, it's too big. Now I cut my stencils out of paper or cardboard. It's really easy material to work with. I never soak it with paint so it, it like um, decomposes or whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna use this little fin, that's perfect. Now we're gonna place it here. I want my fin to be subtle and transparent so I'm gonna just I shoot on my on my paper first and then I'm I'm going in while I'm spraying just a little bit of paint to make it transparent There we go, a subtle, transparent little red fin. We're gonna put a white dot on there as well. And it makes it more pop out. So I'm gonna do one side on all the roaches first. I'm gonna let this dry for a second. And while we're letting this dry, gonna paint our eyes oh. on my reference picture it's a little bit it's more red on the top of it and it's a little bit less red on the bottom of every eye so I will try to maintain that and just paint most of the upper part of every eye So as you can see, the upper part is red, the bottom is less. Now we do we do need to do a few coats on the eyes because the, it doesn't dry quick on the on the epoxy, and we don't want any runners, spider webbing, or drops on there. So we're, I'm just blowing air on it, and when I'm blowing air on it, I make it dry faster. As you can see it becomes a quite red eye. There we go. It's a nice red eye. Now we've done that. We're gonna see if this is dry. It's not that dry yet. So I'm just gonna blow a little air on there. Also rub it off. Feel with your finger. 
Okay, this is totally dry. So let's do the other side. Now I try to maintain it's about underneath about there should be fine Now there's only one thing left to do, and that's put a little white dot in front of the fin, and then uh, we glue the eyes on, and then they are finished. Now you might ask yourself, why didn't you put the white dot when you were doing the belly and the head? That is because if we would put the white dot on first and we spray the white fin uh, last, then the cover, the the red will cover on the, the opaque white, and will you will get the dot seeing through behind the fin. Now we want the uh, the white dot on top over the fin and not behind the fin. So that's why we have to do this last. And that's why we have to come back to white again in the end because we want the white on top and not underneath so I'm mixing up a little bit opaque white with a little thinner Do a little test spray. Looking good. I'm shooting 20 psi. So we got all our white dots on there, now it's time to put some eyes on them, and then we're done. I just tried to use small amounts of glue. I do not always succeed at that. Putting the eye in. There we go. Always make the pointy pupil point forward. Gives you the most realis realistic look. Push them in. There we go. These are gonna look nice with epoxy on. So guys, there we have it, natural roach, quite easy pattern, 
I'll put a link in the description below for the blanks and all the other stuff I used today. Don't forget to subscribe for more painting tutorials and please click like if you liked the video. And if you don't own an airbrush, then I would suggest you click on this video. There I'm going to use only nail polish and glitter and we're going to make color and I even catch fish with it at the end so it's a really nice video. And for those who want to learn a little bit more about stencil techniques I would recommend this video. There I use a little bit of different angles and it's uh, very interesting to see as well. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!